How did I get to be doing what I do now? How did I get to be the me that I am now? And I want to go back to when I was a small child because there is one person among the many who've helped me on my 81-year-old journey through planet Earth, and that is my mother. You don't choose your parents, as far as we know, and I just got lucky. And I was born into a wonderful family with a mother who, above all, was supportive. I was born loving animals. Apparently, even before I could speak, I was watching anything that crawled or flew or walked. We lived in London, so there wasn't much, but whatever there was, I watched. And my mother supported this. So, okay, I'm one and a half years old, and she comes into my bedroom, and I've taken a whole handful of earthworms to bed with me. <laughs> and obviously with the earth as well, so you can imagine the bed's a bit of a mess. And so many mothers would have got angry and said, how dare you? But she just said very quietly, Jane, if you leave them here, they'll die because they need the earth in the garden. And we took them back into the garden. And then a story which I know many of you have heard. It's been immortalized in many books, but I tell it again for a reason. When I was four and a half years old, we had a holiday on a farm in the country, which for an animal-loving little girl coming from a city, like from New York, was magic, and I still remember it so very vividly. Cows, pigs, horses, no cruel factory farms back then. They were out in the fields. And I was given a job of collecting the hen's eggs. And again, no battery farms. So uh, they were, there were little wooden hen houses. I don't know how big they were. I was only four and a half, so they seemed big, but I'm, they were probably you know, about this high, I don't know. And all around the outside were nest boxes. And the hens slept there at night to keep them safe from the foxes. And they were supposed to lay their eggs in these little boxes around the edge. So I would take my basket and collect the eggs, open the lid of the box. If there was an egg, pop it in my box. But apparently I began asking everybody, where does the egg come out of the hen? Because, you know, here's your egg, right? About something like that. And there isn't a hole that big on the hen, I promise you. You can't see one. No, nobody answered me to my satisfaction. So I vividly remember seeing a hen. I can see her now. Shut my eyes, I see her. She's going up this little ramp into the hen house, and I think she's going to lay an egg. And I crawl after her. Big mistake. Squawks of, I suppose, fear. She flies out. And again, four and a half, but I remember thinking, no hen will lay an egg here. It's a frightening place. And going into an empty hen house and waiting. And waiting. And waiting. Fine for me, but my poor family had no idea where I was. <laughs> so imagine my mother is beginning to get evening dark, and she's searching for this little girl, and suddenly she sees excited Jane running towards the house, covered in straw. So many mothers would grab that child, how dare you go off without telling us, don't you know how worried we've been, don't you dare do it again, which would have killed all the excitement. Instead. She sat down and listened to the wonderful story of how a hen lays an egg. Now, if you look back on that story, and the reason I tell it again tonight, isn't that the making of a little scientist? The curiosity, asking questions, not getting the answer, deciding to find out for yourself, making a mistake, not giving up, and learning patience. It was all there, and a different kind of mother might have crushed that spirit of scientific curiosity, and I might not be standing here now.